In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your bathroom fan with or without attic access. Hey everybody, Rudy here from the Home Improvement Channel with another video showing you how to fix things around the house. If you're new to my channel, consider clicking that subscribe button below and also like this video if you found it was helpful for you. So a while ago I did another video on replacing your bathroom fan where instead of replacing the whole housing that was in the ceiling, I only replaced the insert that goes inside the fan and left the housing there in the ceiling. Now this will work in a lot of cases, but in some cases it won't work. You might have an older fan or something like that where you can't buy a modern equivalent for it and you have to replace the whole fan including the housing that's up in the ceiling. That's what I'm going to be doing in this video. You can do this with or without attic access. But if you're going to use one of those higher CFM fans that's quiet and delivers a lot of CFM, say 80, 90, 100 CFM and more, you might find that you only have 3 inch pipe that's up in your ceiling and if you try to put one of those high CFM fans to the 3 inch pipe it will work but it won't deliver the efficiency and the quiet rating that the fan is rated for. I'll show you what I'm talking about later on in this video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. As with any electrical project you'll want to start with the power turned off. Then just remove the grill to the old fan. The new fan should come with a template like this one on the box. If your new fan isn't a square like this one is a rectangle, please be sure to pay attention to which way the template is turned because it will make a difference. You can see here's the exhaust port right here. Just make sure to point the template in the direction it needs to go. And also, you're going to want to pay attention to the joist in the ceiling on which side of the fan it's on so that you don't position your template and wind up with the joist in the middle of the hole. If your new fan is larger than the old fan, it will make things easier to remove the old fan if the new one is larger. If you have a pattern like this, that's fine. If not, just get the measurements from the manual. So once you get your template pointed the direction you want it, just take a pencil and trace it out on the ceiling. Once you've traced it out, I do recommend cutting out the drywall first so that you'll have more room to get your tools in there and the old fan will also be easier to get out. Once you have your square drawn out, um, if you have a tool like this one, that's going to work great. If not, just use a drywall saw, but be careful. Here's the pipe right here. You don't want to hit that. And you also don't want to hit any electrical wire, so just be careful when cutting out the drywall. I like to use this little trick right here with the vacuum. It does cut down on a lot of dust and helps uh, catch a lot of that dust. All right, got the drywall cut out for the new fan. Now obviously I do have attic access as you can see with all the insulation falling on my head. But a lot of you guys have these fans downstairs in the bathroom and there is no attic access. So I'm going to stay down here to show you that it's no problem without attic access. So at this point I would take the insert out of the middle of the fan like the one I referred to earlier, the video I did last time where you can just pop this out right here and replace the old fan and it's back in action but this one is not going to be so simple since we're replacing the entire fan. Alright so right here we can get to our electrical and disconnect that. Just pull those wires down so you can uh, take the wire nuts off. Now this one has a metal nut right here which makes it nice and easy to remove this. A lot of times you might run into a plastic grommet and those are not quite as easy to take off. Also this right here is why I wanted to cut out the drywall first so that I can uh, reach around there and get to stuff. 
And we're just going to leave these wires separated right here in case somebody comes along and turns the switch on. Now obviously we need to disconnect the exhaust right here. Looks like uh, this has just got some of that metal tape. If this doesn't come off real easy, like this one is, just grab a razor knife and cut through the tape. And there we go. Now this side we can get to, there's a screw right here, but we may not be able to get to the other side so easy because of the way the drywall is. So I'm just gonna take this screw out right here. Now if yours doesn't have a screw like this one does, you may need a pry bar to get in there and pry the nails or staples loose. This one, obviously, we can get to this side, but the other side is not as easy. So just come over here and work it around like this. Hopefully you've got room here, but I'll bet you there's a screw here anyway. I'm just gonna pop it up, and yep, there we go. Yeah, before I put the new fan in place, I did wanna mention that this house has three inch ductwork coming from the house. Now, if you run into that, the new fan, if it's a higher CFM fan, probably has a four inch outlet. In this case, I'm gonna use this adapter right here but as I mentioned in the intro, you could possibly run into trouble with a higher CFM fan pushing all that air through the smaller pipe. This fan is 80 CFM, so I'm just gonna roll with it. And I did have to crimp the adapter, as you can see right here, to fit through there. And then after I punch it in there, I'm gonna use some of the metal tape to seal it up and it'll be ready for the new fan. Also, most of the time, your uh, exhaust should be on a flex pipe like this. If yours is completely rigid and you don't have attic access, you'll either have to cut the drywall to move the pipe or make sure your new fan has exhaust in the same place. You're gonna to wanna to start this job with the motor assembly out and a bare housing like this. You'll have to install this exhaust outlet right here. These do have an up and a down, so make sure that it's right. This flap needs to be closed when it's sitting in the level position. There's usually an arrow showing which way is up, so just make sure you don't get it backwards or the flap won't close. All right, let's just hook up the ductwork right here. If you have somebody to hold the fan assembly, that would be better. All right, got that all taped on there. If you're doing a retrofit like this, um, the instructions tell you to fold the uh, flaps that are sticking out right here, fold them down flat, and there's one on the other side there, so that it will fit through the hole. The flaps are either for attic access or a new work install. So just put it up in the ceiling like this, and hopefully you've got the room. Just work your wires through the hole slowly and hopefully your wires aren't too short as these almost were. All right, next thing I want to do is attach the housing to the truss right here but as you can see there's no holes luckily the factory gave you these dimples so I'm just gonna use a drill and put four holes here and screw it down to the truss right here. I'm not going to show all the holes. Okay, I've got them all drilled. Now when you're attaching this, make sure it's pretty flush to the uh, bottom of the drywall like this right here. That's about where that's going to want to go. And also, make sure to use screws that are short enough to not go all the way through the 2 by material, whether it be a 2 by 4 or a floor joist or whatever because you don't know what's on the other side, especially if you're in a downstairs situation, you can't reach over to the other side and confirm that there's nothing there. You might hit a wire or a pipe or who knows what. And as you can see, we're just gonna hook the electrical back up. I just wanted to make a note though, um, if you're doing this where there is attic access and you move the insulation away to install a new fan, you're probably gonna to wanna to go up in the attic after you're all done to scoop the insulation back on top of the fan. It is a hot day here in July, and I feel quite a bit of heat coming from the fan hole right here. 
you might also want to caulk around the perimeter like this to keep the heat loss to a minimum. Now I know that I say the video is without attic access and it's true if you're downstairs you don't need it, but if it were me I would go back up in the attic just to cover the fan back up. Alright, so we got green to ground, white to white, black to black. And that's ready to go. Just fold those wires neatly in the corner. Making sure not to pinch any of the wires right here in the metal when you slide the cover back on. Just slide the fan assembly into the housing like this. Yours is probably going to be different, but uh, they all work pretty much the same. Now this one does have two retaining screws, so don't forget to put those in so the fan doesn't fall on your head when you're taking a dump. And last thing, but not least, plug the fan in right here and give it a test. Runs like a champ. And last thing, the last thing, is to put the grill on and you're done. Thanks for watching.